Hi, brothers and sisters. This is Prophet Bradley from St. Paul, Minnesota. How are you guys doing? Well, you made it to 2020 with me. All right. Today, um, I am going to blow the trumpet of alarm. Okay. In Joel chapter 2, verse 1, the Lord says, Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the earth land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is near at hand. And in Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 3, the Lord says, If when the seer sees the sword coming upon the land, he blows the trumpet and warns the people. And he goes on to say, if he doesn't, that the blood is on his hands. Okay? I just blew the trumpet to let sound, I just sounded alarm as God's prophet to let you guys know what's about to happen. Okay, before I begin, I want to share a confirmation with you. A lot of you guys know that God uses numbers. He has a book in his word called Numbers. Okay, and he confirms many things through numbers. Those of you who are born again and are mature know this. Okay, I want to share a confirmation with you guys. On March 3rd of 1998, at 3.33 in the morning, I was with the Lord in a night dream. Uh, re I call them real dreams. And when I was coming back into my body, I heard the Lord say audibly, your moment, my time. That's why the book that I wrote is called Your Moment, My Time. Okay? I wrote a book with his words, because uh, it meant something to me. Okay, that was 20, now I want you to keep this in mind, that was 22 years ago. 22, okay, is the number we're going to be dealing with. That time has arrived, okay? Now, that time has arrived. All right. Um, in Hebraic numeric value of numbers, zero has no value. Our year is 2020. Do you take away the zeros? You get 22. Okay, it's confirmation number two. The third, 22 in Hebraic numeric value is the number for everything, totality, and God's wisdom and plan. Why? Because there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And when God spoke everything into existence, he spoke in Hebrew to verify. Look up Acts chapter 26, verse 14. Jesus and the Father are one. When Jesus spoke to Paul on the way to, to Damascus, the Bible tells us he spoke in the Hebrew tongue. Okay, so we got 22 years of waiting from the Lord saying, your moment, my time. Uh, our year, 2020, in Hebraic numeric value is 22. And God's wisdom and plan, the totality of everything, is about to, be, to begin very, very soon. A Holy Ghost asked me something the other day. He said, Brad, what's 22 plus 22 plus 22? And I said, it's 66, the total number of books canonized in God's complete word. Okay, now I've got a couple other things I want to share with you guys um, that deal with what's coming and some other things, okay? So bear with me as I deal with this. Okay. 
Now, there's a lot of people on YouTube that have been getting a dream where they come into a room and there's a bunch of clocks with no hands on the clocks. And they ask the Lord, what does this mean? And he says, there's no time left. Okay. There's at least four or five people that have been getting this dream recently. So there's, um, there's a good cause to believe that the Lord's about to go from the natural to the supernatural. Like 1 Corinthians 15 verse 46 tells us. Um, fire and rain are symbolic of the Holy Spirit. There's been more fire and more rain on the globe this year than uh, I can remember. And that's the natural. So the spiritual is just around the corner because Holy Spirit is symbolic of the rain and fire. Okay. Oh, by the way, there were three new fires during Passover last year. Um, the Jews began to do animal sacrifices. And they're all during the Passover week. The Al-Aqsa Mosque caught on fire the same time that Notre Dame caught on fire. So you got new fire for the Jews, new fire for the Muslims, and new fire for the Christians. Okay, let's see what else we got for you here. That's good stuff. Um, um, kings go to war. I want to share this with you guys because, okay, um, the month of Nisan is God's first month. It begins with March 25th, 2020 this year. Okay. It's the first day of God's first month, Nisan, is the evening of March 25th. And um, in 1 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1, get this. And it came to pass that after the year was ended, at the time that kings go out to battle, I'm going to stop there. Jesus is king of kings. We are his kings. The Bible says, after the year was ended, that would mean beginning in the first month. When kings go out to battle, God's about to go out to battle for us, folks. Whether you understand it or not, this is God's word. He is the king of kings. We are his kings kings okay um a lot of people want to know who the antichrist is god has not told me i do not know but i want to share a couple things with you uh some hints okay um putin is probably a runner-up putin was put in a uh, pardon the pun just like uh, all the kings and presidents. In God's word, you'll find that in Daniel chapter 2, verse 21, Romans chapter 13, verse 1, and Psalm 75, verses 6 and 7. But it's, it's interesting because Putin has Satan 1 and Satan 2 written on some of his nuclear missiles. Tell me that ain't personal, okay? Now, there's two things that hint uh, about the Antichrist. He causes craft to prosper, and that will happen after the Mark of the Beast comes out. But he also goes forth conquering and to conquer. Who's doing that right now? Crimea, Ukraine. Who goes after um, God's chosen people in the natural, the Jews, for the spoil in Ezekiel 38 and 39? Russia. Who comes after America and is part of the destruction of America in Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51? God's spiritual people in America, the born-again believers. Putin. So we don't just see him going forth to conquering and to conquer right now, but in the future. And why God's people in the natural, the Jews and God's people in the spiritual, the believers? Hmm? Ooh, that's a signal. 
Okay, C. Did you know that China was referring to Putin as Putin the Great? I know you've seen uh, that he made his government, entire government resign. Looks like he wants to be number one. I don't know that he's the Antichrist, but I'm giving you a heads up. If you see somebody look like they whack him and he comes back to life, that's your man. But he's certainly a runner-up. God did not tell me Putin was the Antichrist. Don't be confused. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. Um, could Because I am a prophet and we are not supposed to tell people what we think. We're only supposed to tell them what God told us to tell them. Okay? Um, right. There's, when you're, when you're looking at America and prophecy, okay, I grew up in America. America was a beautiful country, okay? We're in Babylon, America, right now. She's beginning to change. America stands for freedom. Babylon means confusion. We're in Babylon, America, right now. There's a lot of confusion. When we lose more freedom, it won't be Babylon, America. It's going to be Babylon, okay? America was a good country. America still is okay, but it's getting confusing. When we lose the rights, more rights, and it becomes very confusing, America, Babylon, America becomes Babylon. Okay, we're, we're almost there. Okay, let's see what else we got for you here. Oh, you seen that corona, didn't you? The coronavirus going on. It's in the Bible, did you know that? Yeah, turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 22 and verse 61. Here's what it says. See, God declares the end from the beginning, Isaiah 46, 10. What he did in the past, he will do in the future. And here's, here's mention of the corona. Um, Deuteronomy 28, verse 22. The Lord shall smite, this is what he did with Israel when they weren't obeying. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption. In other words, you'll be consumed or die. And with a fever, corona has that, and with an inflammation, that's what happens to the lungs, and with an extreme burning and with the sword, and with blight and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. The first part, first half of this verse explains the corona to the T. And here is prophecy concerning the coronavirus and other viruses like it. Deuteronomy 28, verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, that would be corona, it's not written, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Now, this is very important, folks, because in James chapter 5, we see that verses 1 through 4, this is how the money flops. I'm going to read it to you. James chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. Come now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are rusted, and rusted is in parentheses. And the rust, see, gold and silver don't rust, okay? He's talking about the rust here. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. A disease gets on the money. You have reaped treasure together for the last days. This is talking about the last days and the money failing. A disease, we already have strep A, which is a flesh-eating disease. When a, this disease gets on the money, the money will fail. And then, just like Luke 21, 25 says, And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth, here it is, Distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. See, when this virus gets on the money and they're dumping it. By the way, China has, is burning a lot of their money right now because of this virus. I don't know if you knew that. But, um, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. 
what are we going to do when the money, when this germ spread and the money uh, can't be touched? Or somebody comes in front of you going to the grocery store and, oh, the, that coronavirus is, it lasts about anywhere up to seven to nine days. It's a pretty healthy germ. Somebody comes in the grocery store and they pull the Cheerios off and they have corona. No, I don't want that. Psst, you come by, pull it off. Sure. I, you see how quick this stuff can spread? Money, groceries, especially. Okay, enough for that. Let's see what else we got for you. Um, when God says he's going to give us the former rain, that's all the miracles of Passover and all the miracles of Pentecost. Okay? You're going to see that repeated. Uh, the former rain is going to be repeated. The latter rain, we've never seen the seven spirits of God poured out yet. You're going to be very, it'll be very wonderful. I mean, you guys are going to be unbelievable. When Donald Trump implements that peace plan, we're going to have some trouble. They made it up. They talk about it. And they're getting ready to implement it. But when it is implemented, not talked about, not made up, nothing else. When, when, they put it, when they put it into motion, here's what's going to happen. God says, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will judge them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. I teach on this in some of my prior videos. Check them out. And it's going to be very, very quick. Um, God's going to come back very quick with the punishment. And they have cast lots for my people and given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the coasts of Phil Philistia? Will ye render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head. When we part God's land, the recompense is going to come swiftly, he says. Probably the same day or the same week, almost for sure. So, uh, let's see what else I got for you here. Um, the Pope wants a globalist religion. I don't know if you've seen that. He says the Catholics are too traditional. He wants to change that tradition. Okay. Um, now there's an Antichrist spirit that's moving across around in the earth, moving across the earth. And it's talked about in a couple of places. Um, 2 John verse 7 Here's what he says about this. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ cometh in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. People can be an antichrist without being the antichrist. You understand? Okay, then we see it again. In 1 John 2, verses 18 and 22. Here's verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. We're at the end. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists. See, there's the Antichrist and there are many Antichrists. Now there are many Antichrists by which we know that it is the last time, the last of times. We're at the end, folks. This is not a game. Okay, and verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. That's what the Bible says. About the Antichrist. And I told you who I think the runner-up is for being the Antichrist. Um, I believe the Antichrist will come during the period of darkness that Isaiah 60 verse 2 mentions. Okay. Uh, 
let's see what else we got here. I think I'll sign off with that. How much time is left on my video? 20? So I got about 10, 10 or 15 left? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've got a little bit of time. I'll give you three rapture hints, okay? Really quick. Because a lot of, you know, I don't know if you guys got this before, but a lot of people want to know when the rapture is. I don't know. The Bible tells us nobody knows. But I'm going to give you some hints, okay? In Romans chapter 9, God is talking, verse 28, God is talking about the harvest here, okay? Romans 9, verse 28. Here's what he says. For he will finish the work, the harvest, and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. The harvest is not going to be months and months and years, okay? He says a short work, all right? In Song of Solomon, we in chapter 2, we see a prophetic parallel picture of the bride talking um, to... Um, the bride and the groom are talking to each other in Ecclesiastes, or Song of Solomon, chapter 2. Okay, I'll just read it. My beloved spoke. This, the, the bride is talking about Jesus here, okay? My beloved spoke and said unto to me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. That's a rapture. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The rain is the poured out latter rain of the harvest, my, my brothers and sisters. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing of birds has come and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs and the vines with the tender grapes give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. That's Jesus speaking to his bride. O oh, my dove, who art in the clefts of the rock and the secret places of the stairs, let me see thy countenance, let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. That's hint number two, when the rapture will take place. Now, Jesus is symbolic of the body of Christ on earth. When he was raised glorious from the tomb, as we will be, he was only on the earth for 40 days. This is a, I believe this is a prophetic parallel. Ask the Holy Spirit. But in Acts chapter 1, um, verse 3, okay, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen by them 40 days. 40 is the number for testing, by the way. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. Jesus was on the earth for 40 days after he was raised glorious. He's our example. He's also symbolic of the body of Christ. We are going to be raised glorious when the Spirit is poured out upon us, according to Isaiah 60, verse 1. Okay? If Jesus' example is symbolic of the body of Christ, once the Spirit is poured out and we are raised glorious, the harvest is a short work. It may only last 40 days. Something for you to think about, okay? <clears throat> All right. Let's see what else I got here for you. See, I don't just do these YouTubes to do them. I'm not monetized by YouTube, and I don't do them unless I've got something to say. So that's why I don't do one every week or day like a lot of these people. 
people that are after the money. Uh, that ain't mine. I, I'm, I do it for you to equip and perfect the saints of God. It is my duty to the Lord to do what I do. And to him only will I answer thank you. Let's see what else we got for you, folks. Okay. Nothing here. We got the, well, I'll show you one more thing, okay? Turn with me to Amos chapter 9. Good stuff, okay? Amos chapter 9. Now, this is talking about after the trouble begins and the har this when the harvest begins. This I saw the Lord, Amos chapter 9, verse 1. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, Smite the capitals of the door, that the posts may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Okay? Um, down in verse 13, the plowman's overtaking the reaper. People are getting saved right and left. But I, the thing I want to show you in verse 9 is where it says, Smite the capitals of the door. I heard Bill Cloud teach on this, and because he's fluent, he knows Hebrew really well. And he said that that, uh, smite the capitals of the door in Hebrew is literally push the buttons. Okay. That's what Bill Cloud is teaching. I don't know Hebrew like him, but if he's correct, you know, that, uh, that pertains. All right. So. I believe that's all I had that the Lord wanted me to show you. Um, the earthquakes mentioned in Matthew, um, where he's talking about all the signs that are going to happen. He says famines, earthquakes, pestilence. Well, Corona's pestilence, folks. But the earthquakes are not all natural earthquakes. Um, I believe uh, suitcase nukes, uh, they register... Um, to the people that, the seismologists that do the earthquakes, suitcase nukes are going to be some of those earthquakes, okay? I don't think it's just natural. But if you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior after repenting, do it now. Abba, my Father, bless these that are watching. In Jesus' name, open their understanding. Let them know. Show them who you are. People, pray. Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart and save my soul. and Be my personal God and Savior. And I'll do my best to serve you the rest of my life. Thank you, Lord. Introduce yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't wait. Behold, today is the day of salvation. This is not a game. We're getting down to the wire, okay? So, thank you for listening. Tell your friends. Check out my YouTubes. And especially, check out the other 15 YouTubes that, that I've done. I promise you, you will learn more in five hours of, and that's about all I got, five hours of YouTubes that I did, and you probably will have in your life when we're talking about what's about to happen, what's happening right now, and um, check it out, okay? Thanks again. I'll do a new YouTube when the Lord gives me something for you. I'm not going to waste your time, my time, or his time. And again, show your friends, you know. If you're, if you're learning something, Galatians 6.6 6 says that you're to share, okay? We'll talk to you later. You have a very blessed day, and um, I'll do another YouTube as soon as the Lord unctions me to do so. Bye-bye.